हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज डॉक्टर गजेंद्र पुरोहित यू आर वाचिंग अवर यूट्यूब चैनल वेयर आई अपलोड वीडियोस फॉर इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स बीएससी आई एम करेंटली टीचिंग इन फाइनाइट सीरीज एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन गॉस टेस्ट सो स्टूडेंट्स व्हेन इज गॉस टेस्ट एप्लीकेबल द गॉस टेस्ट इज यूटिलाइज वेन द डिलेम्बर्ट रेशियो टेस्ट फेल्स टू प्रोवाइड अ क्लियर आंसर एंड द अदर कॉमनली यूज टेस्ट आर नॉट अपलिकेबल बट स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव वन कंडीशन फॉर द गॉस टेस्ट विच इज इफ वी एक्सपैंड यू अपॉन इन ब्रैकेट यू प्लस वन एंड देर इज अ टर्म ऑफ वन अपॉन एन then in that case this test is totally applicable i will explain to you all what other conditions are there so just keep watching we will talk about the gauss test so if we have any infinite series with positive terms and if we have un upon un plus 1 which is expanding in this way so if the value of the row is greater than 1 then the series is convergent is it clear students if the value of row is either 1 or less than 1 then what happens in that case students in that case it diverges but when is this used so students it is used when our delimbert ratio test fails okay and now if un upon un plus 1 can be expanded in the way given over here only then by discussing about it we can tell if this is convergent or if this is divergent right you need to understand this through an example which i will try to explain to you now i want to tell you that if you haven't watched my previous videos on infinite series then you can go to i tab and watch them so this entire series is 2.0 series which i had uploaded earlier and now i am reuploading it students i have not mentioned gauss test before so this is the first time i am uploading this video right now let's talk about the test for the convergence of this series right students we have this series and we need to talk about its convergence we know that its un term what will it be it will be 2 4 6 and so on so nth term of this series will be 2n minus 2 whole square it will go like 2 4 and then so on it will be 2n minus 2 whole square now if we talk about 3 5 7 the square terms are coming so the nth term of this series will be 2n minus 1 whole square now if you consider the un term pay attention students now the un term that we are getting here what is this un it is 2 square then 4 square and so on and then it is 2n minus 2 whole square is this clear so students in the same way if we talk about the denominator then we have 3 square 5 square and so on and we are getting this as 2n minus 1 whole square now we will begin to talk about un plus 1 so what will this be it will be 2 square then 4 square and it will go like this this will be 2n minus 2 whole square and next term will be 2n square similarly if we talk about this we will get 3 square 5 square and so on and then we will get 2n minus 1 whole square then the next term is 2n plus 1 whole square here if we talk about un upon un plus 1 so we will apply the delimbert ratio test therefore limit n tends to infinity un plus 1 upon un as you can see on the board we have the following terms now this term gets cancelled by this term and this term gets cancelled by this term is it clear so we have this term and since it is on top what value will be the value that we will get from its students so the value which will come will be limit n tends to infinity so this will be 2n whole square upon 2n plus 1 whole square now if we will put n tends to infinity so the 2n term given here we will take out its common is it clear students and if we keep n tends to infinity so the answer will be 1 so delimbert ratio test fails now when it fails we have other tests like logarithmic test we can also use the second logarithmic test we can also use the rabe's test right but students we also have a test that can also be used most of the time the question will ask you to use the gauss test is it clear so apply the gauss test when it is said otherwise you can apply any other test now we know that delimbert ratio test has failed now here if we want to apply gauss test then what we will have to do is we can get the value of un upon un plus 1 and then we can reverse this so this will be reversed and after that it will be 2n plus 1 whole square upon 2n whole square okay then we will take 2n which is written over here along with this expression so students then it will be 2n plus 1 upon 2n whole square okay if we simplify this then 2n and 2n will be cancelled out leaving us with 1 plus 1 by 2n whole square if we expand this we will get 1 plus 1 by 2n so students it is 2ab then it is 1 and then this will be 2 plus 1 upon 2n whole raised to the power 2 and if we expand this so then 2 cancels out with 2 so we get 1 upon n plus 1 upon 4n square so students you can see here that this series is expanding in the form of 1 upon n okay here the coefficient of 1 upon n is rho can you all see it so students the value of the row that we are getting here is 1 clear so if the value of row is 1 or less than 1 then this type of series is what 
it is always divergent. And if the value of rho is greater than 1, then in such cases, the series is divergent. So, students, here it is 1. So, this series that we have here will be divergent, right? Now, I will discuss a couple of more questions related to this with all of you. Students, now look at this question. Test the convergence of the given series. Now, if I discuss about its nth term here, so you can see that here we will get 1, then 3, then 5 and so on. Then this will be 2 and minus 3, right students? And you can see all of them have power that is p. So, I will deal with it later. Now, here we will get 2, then 4, then 6 and so on. Then after this, here we will get 2 and minus 2. Is that clear, students? And what will be the power? Here, it will be whole power to the p, right? If we talk in the same manner about the terms of un plus 1. So, here it will be 1, then 3, then 5 and it will continue like this. And then it will be 2 and minus 3. And the next term will be 2 and minus 1 upon 2, then 4, then 6 and so on. Then the term will be 2n minus 2. Now, the next term will be 2n and then it will be whole raised to the power p. Firstly, we will discuss the Delembert ratio test. We know what the Delembert ratio test is. Now, if we talk about limit and tends to infinity, un plus 1 upon un. This will go up and this will go in denominator. Firstly, we will see which terms will come because all of them have power p. So, we will move this total power p here. Then you can see that this cancels out with this and this cancels out with this. So, students, the term that we will be left with is limit n tends to infinity. In the bracket, 2n minus 1 upon 2n, whole to the power p. Is that clear? Now, you can see we are left with this term, right? If un plus 1 is at top, then we will get this. If it's n tends to infinity, okay? In n tends to infinity, if you take 2n as common and then simplify this, then you will get the value as 1. Students, this means the Delembert ratio test has failed. When the Delembert ratio test fails, then we apply another test, which is the Gauss test. And what does Gauss test say? In this, we have the value as un upon un plus 1. So, what does this mean? We will reverse the values which are given here. And when we will reverse it, what will we get here? So, we will get 2n upon 2n minus 1 to power of p. Right, students? Now, what we will do is, we take 2n as common here. By taking 2n as common, we can try to simplify this. So, here if I write 2n to power p upon, from here I will take 2n power p as common. Here we will get, in bracket 1 minus 1 by 2n whole power p. 2n to the power p and 2n to the power p will cancel out. This will get us 1 minus 2n to the power p. And in numerator, it will be minus p. We know that if we have 1 minus x to the power of minus n, then the minus sign multiplies with the exponent. And we get the values as 1 plus n and so on. Okay? So, when minus p will get multiplied with 1, and will keep increasing. So, we will get 1 plus p upon 2n. And in this way, we will get the other terms. Students, here we need to see coefficient of 1 upon n. Rho value in this case is p upon 2. We can see this clearly, right? We know that if the value of rho is greater than 1, then in that case, it will be convergent. Is it clear? So, if the value of p upon 2 is greater than 1, then it will be convergent. This means that if the value is greater than 2, then it will also be convergent, right? And when will it be divergent? If we talk about it, it will be divergent when value of p is less than 2 or equal to 2, right? In simple words, the value of rho is either 1 or less than 1, right? So, in this way, we can solve such questions. We will do one more question and then we will proceed. So, the next part. This type of series is called hypergeometric series. And now we need to discuss. When will this series be convergent? Is it clear? Now, let's talk about it in un term. So, this will be alpha in bracket alpha plus 1. Then we will keep getting the other values like this and we will get alpha plus n minus 2, right? In the same way, we will get values for beta. Then you can see beta, beta plus 1 and so on. Then we will get beta plus n minus 2. So, students, this is our inner term, right? Divided by. We need to pay attention to the terms at the bottom also, right? In denominator, we are getting 1, 2. Here it is 1 and here it is 1, 2. So, ultimately, we are getting n and here we have gamma plus 1. Therefore, we will write gamma, gamma plus 1 and so on. Then, students, here we will get gamma plus in bracket n minus 2. And what would be the value? That we will get from their product. We will get the values as 1 dot, 2 dot and so on till we get n minus 1. So, here we will get its un term, okay? Students, now let's talk about the term un plus 1, which will be alpha, alpha plus 1 and this continues like this. Then alpha and then students, here we will get n minus 1. Is that right? Similarly, if we discuss this, we will get beta, beta plus 1 and it will continue like this. So, beta plus n minus 1. So, like this, we will get its term. Here, we have an extra term of x. So, this will be x to the power n minus 1. You need to pay attention. 
students here we will get one dot two up to this now here we will get n is that clear this will be in bracket gamma gamma plus one and it will continue like this and it will be gamma plus n minus one so this is how we will get this here and here we will get x power n now we will discuss the delimbert ratio test and we will find out about limit n tends to infinity u n plus one upon u n so now you can see that which terms can be cancelled right so we can always cancel these two terms here so this term will be cancelled out with the previous term the same will happen with these two similarly using the same logic these will also get cancelled out and same goes for these two right students so from here what will be left in the numerator limit n tends to infinity so students we will get alpha plus n minus 1 and x will also be cancelled out here is that clear so this is how we will get beta plus n minus 1 and then upon so from here what will we get we will get n and then this will be in bracket gamma plus n minus 1 and then here we will get multiplied by x right students now what will we do here we will see the behavior of this series at n tends to infinity so what i will do is i will take n minus 1 common from here and i will do same here so as soon as i take n minus 1 as common we will get limit n tends to infinity then this will be n minus 1 whole to the power 2 this will be alpha divided by n minus 1 plus 1 plus beta divided by n minus 1 plus 1 sorry students it is not addition it is multiplication okay similarly here i take out the common as n into in bracket n minus 1 and students this will be gamma upon n minus 1 plus 1 into x now look carefully if you keep n tends to infinity then what is the value that we will get if we will take n square as common so all the terms will be cancelled out and then the final value will be x so now we know that if we see the Lambert ratio test and examine it and check when is a series convergent the series is convergent when the final value of this whole operation is less than 1. In simple terms, value of x should be less than 1. Okay? And if we talk about the series being divergent, so it will be divergent when the value of x is greater than 1. Is that clear? And students, what about when the test fails? What will be the value? So the test will fail when we get the value of x as 1. If the test fails at x equals to 1, which test will we apply here? We will apply the Gauss test. Now, what does the Gauss test say here? If we talk about Gauss test, the Gauss test talks about un upon un plus 1 and we will check for this term using this test only. Right students? To check the value for un upon un plus 1, we will inverse these values. So when we take the reciprocal of this, we get n and here it will be in bracket gamma plus n minus 1. Right? That was numerator divided by. Now the denominator will be alpha plus in bracket n minus 1. And here we will get beta plus in bracket n minus 1. Right? Now we are facing a small problem because all the terms are in form of n minus 1. So we will take one term ahead of this. As it is an infinite series, its behavior does not change much. So wherever I find n minus 1, I replace it with n. And where I find n, I replace it with n plus 1, meaning I increase the term by 1, right? So that it will be easy to simplify this question. Is that clear? We can do this, but if you don't want to do it, because we have to take out the term 1 upon n. If we take n minus 1, then we have to see coefficient of 1 upon n minus 1 in Gauss test, right? So what will we do? We will just change this a little. So what will I do is I will substitute with n plus 1 for n in un upon un plus 1, wherever n is there. So we will get n plus 1 and this will be gamma plus n divided by we will write alpha plus n and this will be beta plus n. Okay, students. Now it will be a little easier. I will take both these terms to the numerator. What to do now? Since we have to expand it, I will take n common from here. So you will get 1 plus 1 by n. From here also I'll take n as common. So it will be n square. So you will get 1 plus gamma by n. So in this same way I will take n as common and we get n square and here we get 1 plus alpha by n. And we will get 1 plus beta by n. So n square will get cancelled with n square. Students now you will see that you will get value as 1 plus 1 by n and 1 plus gamma by n. And this term, see it is a bit of a difficult question, right? This will go up and get inversed. Now what do we have to do here? We just have to find the coefficient of 1 upon n. We just need to find this out. Now, we are going to expand this a little bit because we don't have enough space. So, students, I am thinking of erasing this part because it's done and we don't need this. So, I am removing this and here I am trying to calculate it. Okay, students. So, students, what is the value that we are getting here? The value that we are getting here is un upon un plus 1. Now, what will we do in this? We will multiply it. So, this will be 1 and here it is 1 upon n. So, then students, we will take 1 by n as common then we will get 1 plus gamma and this will be gamma by n square. Is that clear students? Now if we expand this, so we will get 1 minus alpha by n plus alpha raised to power 2 by n square and so on. Thus we will get the terms in this manner, right? 
similarly if we discuss about this so it will be 1 minus beta by n plus beta raised to power 2 divided by n raised to power 2 this is how we will get terms so what do we do we simplify it a little bit first of all look we will get one here now we will see where coefficient of 1 by n will come when we multiply this part by this it will get coefficient of 1 by n so what i will do is i will write 1 plus 1 by n so here we have the value as minus alpha so now 1 will be multiplied by this so we will get negative beta right and this term over here when it will be multiplied by this term over here then we will get the coefficient of 1 by n so this will be 1 plus gamma right students this will get us the coefficient of 1 by n the remaining terms will also come here right now you need to see that for this row value that we are getting is there any specific value for which this series will be convergent so students here i am trying to tell you all that if minus alpha minus beta plus 1 plus gamma thus if the value of this operation is greater than 1 then this will become convergent clear students and students here if minus alpha minus beta plus 1 plus gamma is less than or is equal to 1 then the series will be called as divergent right so students in this way we can solve these types of questions very easily so this question is for your comment box how many seconds did it take you to solve this please comment and tell me students if you want you can also watch other videos from this 2.0 series over here if you are preparing for the csir net gate or iit jam exams and want to improve your short tricks you can watch my videos here and students please do subscribe to the channel over here thank you very much to everyone goodbye